so speaking of mindfulness and take me through a day in your life where you've got a game that day go from when you wake up to the end of that day what it, what mindfulness techniques are you using or how are you using mindfulness throughout that day and i want to hear you know your pre-game to when you're in the game to when you're after the game what are the things that you do to be mindful yeah i think like a lot of it happens before game day as well um in terms of can i keep this practice consistent like i would keep my drag practice or my strength practice and so i'm getting all these and i'm learning i'm definitely at the beginning of my process but it's fun to look at the mastery process as we go but mm. um it's like can you get your mental reps in before game day mm. and so i you know every day i'm not perfect it's just like but i i and you go through ebbs and flows of the practice but i like to sit down whether it's 10 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the morning i sort of i just kind of go on feel and i always finish my night um, with a gratitude practice, a gratitude meditation that goes for about 10 minutes. Mm. And when I do that, I feel very centered. And um, like at the moment, I meditate maybe two or three times a day. And it can be like between, sometimes it'll be a minute, sometimes it'll be 20 minutes, um, or even just working, incorporating body scanning. I worked with John Quinn and, and he that's, he's massive on that. So just like feeling your body, feeling where you are, um, using your breath to kind of like anchor you in that moment. Um, but on game day, I would usually sit and meditate in the morning. Um, yeah, I, I do sit and meditate in the morning and most of the girls are kind of like, they sometimes, sometimes take the piss out of me, you know, but like a few of them are, are starting to do it. You know, sometimes I get like a Snapchat of me sitting there like, <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, oh God, don't send that to the group. But, yeah. you know, and you're just hoping that you're rooming with another meditator and you're like, Please. yeah, yeah. So we can just sit there both. I've done it a couple of times in the Firebirds where both of the teammates will be sitting there in silence with eyes closed, uh, doing a bit of visualization, uh, meditation yeah. in the morning. But yeah, so you've, you've now done that in the morning and yeah, so I do that and I, and I try and, um, you know, sometimes it's even just like listening to George Mumford's podcast, sometimes do that or the meditation app that I use. He has a, um, like a, 13 part program and just having like those mental cues about like, what's my intention for today? What do I actually want to get out of this? Where does my, yeah, that intention of you're trying to become a better hockey player rather mm -hmm. than, you know, you can get dragged into some interesting stuff, you know, like, am I starting? How many minutes will I have? Like all that stuff that all athletes, as much as they say, they don't think about it. It, it bubbles up, even if it's just for a, moment mm. um yeah so that's probably so you, the practice yeah you're the work the happens before game day is yeah. probably what i'm saying so you're in the game and you've talked about flow and being in the zone mm. but suddenly you're now not in the in the flow you're not in the zone you've seen the crowd you, you know things are now distracting you what two or three things or maybe one thing that you do to go back to try and get yourself back into flow what would be some some yeah, techniques that you do it's it's super interesting and i like like i said i'm still experimenting with this stuff like i i've got so much further to go which is which is cool um it's exciting to see where i can get to with mm. this mindfulness training um, a massive one that I used when I was trying to make it back into the um, into the black six at the end of last year was just around like self compassion, and it's quite an interesting one to talk to athletes about because compassion in the past hasn't really had its place in sports performance, you know. Mm. Um, but for me, and again, it goes back to like, are you aware of what works for you? I know that my harsh self-criticism trips me up. It keeps mm. me in the mistake. So if I can do a little bit of self-compassion to myself, um, it can just like change my state a little bit. And so that I find that really helpful. Mm. Um, the other probably things that I do is just around my breath. So like I talked about the work happens 
on the cushion when you're sitting there and being able to bring your mind back to the present moment and having your breath as the anchor. So mm. sometimes it's just, right, okay, breathe, back in the body. Mm. What's the next thing that I need to do? And yeah, and like I think, yeah, yeah, and Quinny's, Quinny said, you know, like he's suggested, feel the hockey stick in your hand. And for me personally, that doesn't really work. I don't, it doesn't resonate with me, um, but the breathing stuff does. Mm. Um, yeah. So they're probably two of the really key things. And then I think like, I sometimes try and fall back on my strengths. So like, you know, looking at what I look like as my best self and that's talking, that's mm. being calm, that's being clear in my decision making. Um, yeah. And, and even if it's, you know, like geeing someone else up, that helps me sometimes get out of my ruminating thoughts and, and, to think about someone else and how I can help the team is probably mm. the other technique that I use, mm. but I'm, I'm working on all of them. I'm still working on all of them mm. so much, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You just mentioned there your best self and that's something I use uh, in the mornings you, thinking about my day ahead and I, and I will think about, okay, what have I got on? I've got, you know, interview with Rachel. I've got, you know, a couple of things I've got to edit. I've got to, um, ring this guy i've got to also do this rehab things like that and mm -hmm. the the thing i start with in the, and a little bit of visualization of the day i will ask myself okay how would my best self act in all those situations and that is just a way to prime myself to go so that when i am in the in the situation my best self would be you know listening to to what rachel was saying um you know not mm -hmm. thinking about too much about the next question you know thinking about the edit yeah. or all those things is, is just trying to go, all right, my best self is going to be here right now. Um, going back to George Mumford, like reading his book, I, I was doing, you know, daily meditation, um, visualization practice and I was doing it, but I sometimes would only do the mindfulness in that moment and then, and then just go into the world and not think about it. Not that I have to think about it all the time, but one of the things he mentions mm. about is being mindful 24 seven. And mm. I combine that with another book. I read the way of the peaceful warrior. And one of the quotes was, what time is it now? Where am I here? And so I kind of combine those two as a way to, to get myself in the moment back in the moment is to just really go, all right, what's happening right now? I've got the ball in my hand all right, I need to run in and bowl here. I'm trying to bowl this type of ball. All right, let's see, let's just use my effort and attitude to try and do this best I can. And then, but they're like techniques that I've, you know, practiced, but then also thought about or learned or read um, that you consciously have to remind yourself in that moment to, to, to do that. But it's definitely helped uh, me be more relaxed in the moment. Oh. Uh, I know, like, and it was interesting. So I do a few presentations with like um, younger kids and stuff, just trying to teach them this skill. And like a couple of the studies that I've been reading, it's the one that came out of Harvard. They um, looked at like 5,000 people. Mm. And what they found is 47% of the time, our mind is wandering. Mm. And like, do you think about that's half your life that your mind wandering? <laughs> you know, that's quite a crazy way of, of looking at it. So I guess it's just trying to like edge that 47 upward <laughs> to, yeah. you know, that's yeah. the way that I love it. Sometimes. And quite often flow and in the zone, you're actually not thinking you're just, you're just doing and you're just, 100%. and it's just, it's just happening every, every time it, you know, an athlete gets interviewed after going, Oh, what, what do you do there? And you go, Oh, I actually don't quite remember. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of doing it. It was just reacting and it was happening and you sometimes when you actually think oh i'm actually in the zone here that's when you click out of it because you're yeah. like you know, you're like damn it i've just oh i was having so much fun yeah. yeah and that's and that's a huge thing that george mumford's book and his teachings say it's like you know you can't consciously get into flow mm. you have to become flow ready and yeah. mindfulness is the tool to allow you to become flow ready mm. um yeah and so and 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 for me like i know that i'm um i'm an overthinker mm. and it was quite funny i was i was watching that doco of kerry evans and richie a couple of 
oh, what do I mean, months ago. And the, and Kerry Evans described Richie as an overthinker. And it was it was it was weird how it just kind of made me feel okay that someone you know that had achieved such great things in sport was an overthinker because sometimes you think oh I think about things way too much, but it's like it's that skill if you can be an overthinker but can you sustain your attention when you need to mm. and that's the thing that mindfulness is training and I think that's why I love it so much yeah. because it does allow me as an overthinker to not think and get into those flow states yeah yeah um 